I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, and this is a breaking news alert. A federal criminal complaint has been filed today against David DePape, the MAGA right-wing extremist who broke into the home of Nancy Pelosi and bludgeoned Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, over the head with a hammer, causing grievous injuries during a home invasion where the aim by David DePape was to cause grievous bodily injury to Nancy Pelosi in this federal criminal complaint. Uh, DePape has been charged with one count of assault of an immediate family member of a United States official with the intent to retaliate against the official on account of the performance of official duties, which carries a maximum sentence of 30 years in prison. DePape was also charged with one count of attempted kidnapping of a United States official on account of the performance of official duties, which carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. And these charges are in addition to the attempted homicide charges that have been filed by state prosecutors. So DePape will be facing both state criminal charges as well as these federal criminal charges. And we're learning more information about what transpired in an interview that uh, occurred uh, on October 28th. 2022. It's a Mirandized interview, meaning that DePape was told he had the right to remain silent by the San Francisco Police Department. This is what uh, DePape stated, and this is in the criminal complaint filed by the Department of Justice today. DePape stated that he was going to hold Nancy Pelosi hostage and talk to her. If Nancy were to tell DePape the, quote, truth, he would let her go. And if she, quote, lied, he was going to break her kneecaps. DePape was certain that Nancy would not have told the, quote, truth. In the course of the interview, DePape articulated he viewed Nancy as, quote, the leader of the pack of lies told by the Democratic Party. DePape also later explained that by breaking Nancy Pelosi's kneecaps, she would then have to be wheeled into Congress, which would show other members of Congress there were consequences to actions. DePape also explained generally that he wanted to use Nancy to lure another individual to DePape. That individual is not mentioned in this affidavit that was filed. DePape stated that he broke into the house through a glass door, which was a difficult task that required the use of a hammer. DePape stated that Pelosi was in bed and appeared surprised by DePape, Paul Pelosi. DePape told Paul Pelosi to wake up. DePape told Paul Pelosi he was looking for Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi responded that she was not present. Pelosi asked how they could resolve the situation and what DePape wanted to do. DePape stated that he wanted to tie Paul Pelosi up so that DePape could go to sleep as he was tired from having to carry a backpack to the Pelosi residence. Around this time, according to DePape, DePape started taking out twist ties from his pocket so that he could restrain Paul Pelosi. Pelosi moved towards another part of the house, but DePape stopped him and together they went back into the bedroom. While talking with each other, Pelosi went into a bathroom where Paul Pelosi grabbed a phone to call 911. DePape stated that he felt like Paul Pelosi's actions compelled him to respond. DePape remembered thinking there was no way the police were going to forget about the phone call. DePape explained that he did not leave after Pelosi's call to 911 because much like the American founding fathers with the British, he was fighting against tyranny without the option of surrender. At this point in the interview, DePape repeated that DePape did not plan to surrender and that he would go through Pelosi once the police arrived and knocked down the door and Pelosi ran over and opened it. DePape stated that he pulled the hammer away from Pelosi and swung the hammer towards Pelosi. DePape explained that Pelosi's action resulted in Pelosi taking the, quote, punishment instead. We'll post a link to uh, this full summary here on the uh, on the YouTube description below for those watching this uh, on YouTube. 
paragraph 16 of this affidavit that was filed by an FBI agent also states that on October 29, 2022, law enforcement determined that DePape lived in a garage of a residence on Shasta Street in Richmond, California, by interviewing the owner of the premises who confirmed that DePape resided in the garage for approximately two years. This was searched by the law enforcement. Uh, the garage was searched, and what they found were two hammers, two more hammers, a sword, and a pair of rubber and uh, cloth gloves. The agents also found evidence that uh, Pape lived in the garage, including DMV paperwork, IRS letters, and PayPal uh, credit cards. Also, when they searched the premises, the Pelosi premises, they found other twist ties and other items, disgusting and disturbing items, showing uh, the intent here was for this home invasion to then hold Pelosi hostage, uh, Nancy Pelosi, attack her, cause grievously bodily injury, and potentially kill her, um, and lure her to bring in who knows, who knows who else he was talking about there. But, you know, look, when you read that, I don't know if I, I, I had chills running down my spine when I read this federal complaint and that detail, and it elucidates even more just how despicable the tactics have been by the MAGA Republicans to immediately, immediately come up with a disgusting conspiracy theory that Paul Pelosi was actually uh, secretly in a relationship with the attacker and that he was in his underwear and that this was something about uh, you know, lovers and uh, immediately going to a conspiracy theory, a dis despicable conspiracy theory to defame Paul Pelosi, who was the victim of this home invasion, to then further attack Nancy Pelosi after the incident, and you had people like Governor Glenn Youngkin, Republic, MAGA Republican in Virginia, basically saying that uh, we need to defeat, Na after the incident, we need to defeat Nancy Pelosi so she can go back to that house of hers, or words to that effect, the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee further attacking Nancy Pelosi after the incident. These, these posts on by Trump on his social media platform immediately after the assault with QAnon uh, slogans on his shirt and other photographs of him and memes holding guns right after the incident or his adult child, whatever the hell you want to call him, Don Jr., who, by the way, whether we want to admit it or not, is a leader of the MAGA Republican Party. He is a leader of that political party who posted a photo and said for Halloween, he's going as Paul Pelosi with a photo of a hammer on underwear. Um, again, further spreading the conspiracy. How do you not come together as a nation in a time like this? And this isn't a both sides issue. Because I could assure you, if anything like this were to happen to any Republican leader, Democrats would absolutely show compassion, point blank, full stop. And MAGA Republicans have been egging on this violence, specifically target at people like Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi each and every day with horribly violent rhetoric by using memes with guns and weaponry in connection with removing Nancy Pelosi. They're not just throwing red meat to their base. They are literally throwing human beings who are Democrats to the slaughterhouse, to these radicalized MAGA extremists to kill. That is who the MAGA Republican Party is. This is why I've said it over and over again as you read a background like this. This is not any more about politics. Oh, the Democrats believe in this and the Republicans believe in this and I want to be, I'm social, uh, I'm liberal on the social issues and I'm conservative on economic. It's not what this is about. 
Really, what we're about right now is right or wrong. Are we a nation of laws, of dignity and respect? Or are we a nation of criminality, fascism, gaslighting, conspiracies, QAnon, whatever whatever that is? I even think about Gretchen Whitmer, governor of Michigan, continuously to this day, who was the victim of an attempted kidnapping spurred on by MAGA Republicans, who to this day encourage that type of behavior. The individuals were convicted to this day, encourage behavior like that. Her opponent mocks that in speeches. This is not isolated incidents. This is who the MAGA Republican Party is. That after an incident like this, they can't say that was horrific. That was wrong. We're thinking of the Speaker of the House in these time in her in in these difficult times. We condemn in the harshest terms violence like this. It has no place in the party. It has no place in this country. We condemn anyone. That's not what they say. They lean in more after this incident, spreading dangerous conspiracies to try to kill Democrats. How else would you interpret their conduct? This isn't a debate over, oh, well, Democrats support this policy and and, and this initiative and, and this. The, Democrats support those things. Democrats are actually fighting for issues that matter to Americans. Democrats are talking about things like, okay, how do we make health care more accessible? How do we make education more accessible? How do we raise the minimum wage to not just a living wage, but a wage with dignity? How do we improve working conditions? How do we make sure that there's better maternity leave policies and paternity leave policies and sick leave policies? And how do we deal with troops who return who may be exposed to toxic burn pits? And how do we address it to make sure they get the best health care that they deserve? And oh, how do we improve the semiconductor industry here in the United States? How do we address these issues? That's what Democrats are talking about. And you could say, well, oh, you're not going far enough on this issue. You're not going, you're going too far. Or maybe our priorities should be this. Or maybe our, and by the way, I haven't even talked about the fact that Democrats are protecting fundamental freedoms like the right to choose, the right to women to have bodily autonomy, the right to be free, that we can send our kids to school without being hunted down by people with weapons of war because Republicans have made those guns, the weapons of war guns, so accessible without any common sense, responsible gun ownership. Democrats were trying to grapple with difficult problems. And what our MAGA Republicans do, they are posting photographs of hammers and underwear together and saying that that's a Halloween costume of Paul Pelosi after the Speaker of the House had it was an attempted assassination attempt was directed at her. Are you kidding me? That's what the Republican Party stands for? People, this November, it's not a choice about Democrats and Republicans. It is a choice about who we are as a nation. What is our character as a nation? Do we support our constitution? Do we support our democracy? And once we get there, once we're fundamentally there by voting for Democrats, we can have complicated debates on issues like a functioning democracy should. But MAGA Republicans do not want a functioning democracy. They want a country of David DePapes. David DePapes running around on the street. David DePapes running around in your neighborhood. David DePapes being becoming senators, people like David DePape being members of Congress. That's what these MAGA Republicans want. And that's why we got to stop that from happening right now. And I'm just so angry when I read that affidavit that was filed in the criminal complaint today. But let's channel that anger into voting. Make sure you call people to vote. Share this video with people. You vote, get people to vote. Please.
This is not a passive community here at the Midas Touch Network where you watch a video and go, oh, Ben did a good video, great video, Ben. I'm just going to now watch another video. No, that's not what the Midas Touch Network community is. This community is an active community. So now after you watch this video, please email, call, text, family, friends, whoever. Make sure they vote blue. Get them out to vote blue for our democracy, for compassion, for rejecting a world of David DePapes and Don Juniors. It's absurd that we're even having this discussion. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit the subscribe button now. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. It's free to subscribe, so please hit the subscribe button right now. And in addition to subscribing, one way you can help out as well, no matter where you are in the world, check out our Patreon website at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. There is a number of exclusive benefit packages there that you could join, membership packages, exclusive content behind the scenes, extra podcasts, exclusive merch drops, and so much more. But most importantly, help grow this independent media platform. We are not funded by any outside investors. We are purely fueled by you and powered by democracy. So if you can help, no pressure either way, but please Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellis. This November is Rovember. Midas Touch just released its brand new collection of Rovember t-shirts and pins to let the country know what's at stake this upcoming midterm election. Go to store.midastouch.com to grab yours. That's store.midastouch.com.